Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and for those of you who don't know, uh, Stomping Grounds has just happened. Uh, it, it was a decent pay-per-view, it actually surprised me, like it was a lot better than I originally thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be one of the worst pay-per-views ever, but no, it, it defeated my expectations. By no, by no means was it like the best pay-per-view or one, even one of the best pay-per-views of the year or anything, but hey, it, it was decent, it was decent. So I, uh, let's get into everything that actually happened at Stomping Grounds. So the first match that we saw was on the pre-show. This was the triple threat for the Cruiserweight Championship between Tony Nese, Drew Gulak and Akira Tazawa. Uh, a lot of great moments throughout this match. A lot of the biggest offense actually came from Akira Tazawa. Akira Tazawa had a great showing in here. Uh, we, we saw a lot of fast-paced action in this. Uh, we saw a lot of more technical wrestling as well as like the fast-paced stuff that we usually get with the 205 Live guys, which I felt was great. As well, uh, it's a match that involved Tony Nese and Drew Gulak. They are like brilliant when it comes to the whole technical side of wrestling. We saw a lot of false finishes. We saw Tony Nese hitting the running Nese, and we were led to believe that he was going to pick up the victory at the, at that point. But it ended up being Drew Gulak picking up the victory, pinning Akira Tozawa. So, going with the concept of stomping grounds, Drew Gulak is now Drew Akira Gulak. Then we moved on to the main show, and the first match on the main show was actually the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Lacey Evans. This match was nothing to write home about. It was, pre uh, it was pretty boring, to be honest. That, that, that's about all I could say. At one point we even saw Becky gone for the disarmor, but uh, Lacey Evans had got to the bottom rope, so that broke that up. Uh, like I say, this this match was, it was just pretty boring and naff for my standards. We eventually saw Becky Lynch picking up the victory, uh, locking in the disarmor onto Lacey Evans, and Lacey Evans immediately tapping out. Like, as soon as it was locked in, just straight up tapping out. Becky retains. I mean, I'm glad Becky retains, but could have been a better match. Then we move on to the second match of the night, and this one was actually really exciting. This was Biggie and Xavier Woods of the New Day against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Now, straight after the bat, Kevin Owens was facing off against Xavier Woods and took uh, Biggie straight away with a super kick, and then began just working on Xavier Woods. Super kick after super kick after super kick. They were trying everything to keep down Xavier Woods, but Xavier Woods kept getting pinned and kept kicking out. It showed great resilience from uh, Xavier Woods while showing the great heelish tactics from Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. It was a great way to boost up both like teams in this match. Another thing that I liked is uh, while Xavier Woods was in the ring, they kept... Well, Kevin Owens mainly just kept taunting Big E. Uh, it, it was, again, it's just another way to play on the great heelish tactics from uh, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is an amazing heel. Probably the best heel on SmackDown. Obviously, you get that big moment where Xavier finally tags in Big E and Big E just goes wild. Like Those are the moments you need in those tag team matches. The big guy is separated from the smaller guy through the, the majority of the match and then finally gets in and then all hell breaks loose. It's a standard way for a, a tag team match to go but it's like the best way for a tag team match to go at the same time. Now we get to the end of the match and Xavier Woods has gone to the top turn buckle and Kevin Owens knocks him down and then hits a stunner to pick up the 1-2-3. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn pick up the win. I don't really think anybody was expecting Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to, to pick up the win here. I was just really, really hoping for it because they, they deserve these wins. They don't really get these big wins that often considering, you know, they're the heels. And, you know, dastardly heels, they need to lose a lot. So it, it's nice to see when the, the the best superstars get a good win. Don't get me wrong, Xavier Woods, Big E, amazing talents, but... Hey, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I, they they are fucking brilliant and a lot of the time it seems like they get a big push and then nothing's done with them for ages and they get a big push and then nothing's done with them for ages actually did something with them then we move on to a match that I'm slightly 
I don't know how I feel about it. I'm like 50-50 on it. The match itself, the action was fucking great. This was for the United States Championship between Samoa Joe and Ricochet. For a lot of it, it just showed the complete dominance of Samoa Joe while showing that resilience and being able, the power to come back from Ricochet. Both of these superstars are absolutely fucking fantastic. And I, I was expecting match of the night from this. I think everybody was expecting match of the night from this. And in my opinion, it didn't fail to deliver. It's, it's the end that's kind of mm, iffy. So we, uh, during the match, we got to see Ricochet avoiding the Coquina Clutch. We got to see Samoa Joe avoiding the 630. Uh, so I, we got to play on those little bits. But Ricochet eventually did hit the 630 and picked up the pinfall win on Samoa Joe to claim the United States Championship. Now don't get me wrong, I am completely happy with Ricochet getting a title. The problem is he has got the United States Championship. And we've seen what this can do to people. The United States Championship can ruin people completely. Uh, it doesn't seem to have had that effect on Joe at the moment. Unless he just disappears for the limelight completely now. Oh, I don't want that to happen to Joe. And I don't want this title to completely ruin Ricochet. It's one of those, I guess we'll have to wait and see moments. But... Mm. It, it, it's not really ruined the match it has kind of taken away from it because I'm sat with this uncertainty on what's going to happen in the future now we move on to a match that for me wasn't it really it's not really it was a bad match uh, it just it kind of felt long and I don't even think it was as long as it actually felt it just really felt long it was for the Smackdown Tag Team Championships between Daniel Bryan and Rowan and Heavy Machinery. Uh, I, I, I am probably nitpicking here, but it just felt long, which isn't really what you want for a match. I love the fact that uh, throughout the match, you've got the faces completely getting destroyed by the crowd. They're getting booed completely. And the heels are the ones that are actually getting cheered. This is because they were in Washington, obviously. So, you know, Daniel Bryan, Aberdeen, Washington, you know, home crowd pop. The action itself was really good within this match. It, very slow at times, but sometimes it picked up and started moving to a pretty fast pace. But, like I say, hmm, some disappointment in it. I think the main disappointment comes from the end, uh, where we see Tucker Knight taking out Row Rowan, and then getting back into the ring to a roll-up victory. I mean, I uh, it plays off a, the whole heels getting a victory by any means. But I don't like roll-up victories. They spoil matches for me. I want a clean, decisive victory. Unless it's gone into a big, massive storyline. But I don't see this going into a big, massive storyline. I see no challenges for the championship, for the championships in the future. So... Oh, I don't know where we go for here with this. I did like the little promo that was cut before uh, with Brian saying all this stuff with pranks and being silly and all that lot. It's taken away from the tag team division and we're here to make it more serious uh, to actually be treated like a proper division. I like that because you know what the tag team division in WWE is like. It's abysmal. The, the tag team division... Smackdown and Raw just absolutely horrendous. So I think it actually does need fixing. But I still your tag team champions, Daniel Bryan and Rowan. Then we move on to the Smackdown Women's Championship match. This was between Alexa Bliss and Bailey. Now leading up to this we'd had the whole story between uh, Alexa convincing Nikki Cross that Bailey was a bully and all that and sending out tweets and everything. And I, I liked that little addition because otherwise it would have just been like another rehashed match. And I we all know that it's a rehashed match. We've already seen Bailey versus Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. But I add that little twist to it. It kind of gives it a little something, I guess. I mean, uh, throughout the match, there's not really too much to get into. 
uh, up until towards the end. It was a pretty standard like match that you'd get on SmackDown or maybe even Raw. Like no, no Raw. But I guess, uh, well, I don't know lately. SmackDown. It was a bit better than a current SmackDown match. It was like an older SmackDown women's match. We saw uh, Alexa screaming at the ref a few times, which uh, she, she's a heel. She gets angry, and plus, uh, Alexa's the petty heel, so I do like the whole, you know, childish side and all that. Lot. It, it, it's it's good. The temper tantrums. Towards the end of the match, we saw Alexa Bliss stood with Nikki Cross on the outside, and Bailey goes to jump over. Uh, well, goes for a tope to a cedar and. Well, it's not very clear from watching it. See, I, we watching it, I thought that Nikki Cross had actually pushed Alexa out of the way. Commentary team are saying that Alexa moved out of the way. And I am unsure. Basically, Bailey hit Nikki, which eventually led to Nikki get, trying to get to Bailey inside the ring who was set up for the Twisted Bliss. And it ended up costing Alexa Bliss, who ended up getting hit with the belly to belly and losing the match. The one good thing that I could see coming for this is we get a match Nikki Cross versus Bailey for the championship, maybe. It seems like a rivalry sort of building there, which could be good. It'd be good to see Alexa Bliss sticking with Nikki on this. And then trying to weasel away into a championship uh, match against Nikki if Nikki actually won. Kinda a hard one to go for. It's kinda confusing to think about the future of that championship and this whole storyline. Or maybe the storyline's just kaput, it's just done and they're gonna have Alexa and Nikki as full time tag team partners, who knows? If it's actually building into some sort of storyline, okay, the ending to this match was really good. If it isn't, then it was just a bit confusing. Uh, but I, even considering that this match kind of felt like a SmackDown women's match that you would have got about a month or two ago, do you know, before SmackDown started to go to shit. Aye, it, it, it was a good match. Uh, like, I did enjoy watching it. So the next match that we got was Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. Uh, now, in terms of the actual in-ring action, the match was... A pretty decent match like the action itself was all right uh, Drew McIntyre hit this amazing submission I absolutely loved it he like locked down Roman Reigns' feet like in his midsection and then like pulled down on his arms uh, it, it looked amazing I'll put a screenshot of it here uh, but honestly go and check out that one submission it was fucking incredible Drew McIntyre looking absolutely brilliant in this match. He was definitely the best one out of the two. And we move towards the finish. I don't really want to talk too much about the in-ring action because, well, you know, spears and Superman punches. Roman Reigns hit a spear on Drew McIntyre. Hit him pin for the 1-2-3. Shane came, broke up the pin. And he hit the coast to coast on Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns still kicked up. Roman Reigns ended up hitting a second spear and getting the one, two, three. And Drew McIntyre still could not get the fucking win against Roman Reigns, even with an assist from Shane McMahon. Bear this in mind that Shane McMahon has beat Roman Reigns with a little with a little bit of help from Drew McIntyre. Yet Drew could not get the win against Roman. That is an utter piss take. That just shows how much fucking faith you're putting behind Drew McIntyre. You are destroying his fucking push 100%. I absolutely hate it. I do not like the fact that they're just they're just destroying Drew, and he is literally the best heel in well Raw and SmackDown. I don't know if I want to say the full company. 
I would say possibly the best heel on the full, uh, the, the whole of WWE, but he is definitely the best heel on Raw or SmackDown. And yeah, this is what this is what he gets. And this is it, it's abysmal. If you don't watch what you're doing, WWE, he's got to go again, and he will be the hottest superstar on the Indies again. So the next match that we got was the cage match between Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship. Again, another match that I was looking at, and it was it was a little more than boring. It wasn't completely boring, but it wasn't exactly exciting either. It was alright for a match. Um, we got to see a lot of those false climb outs, like, but I, um, we were kind of expecting that. I mean, it's a cage match. I'd say the best offense that we really saw was Ziggler locking in that leg lock, and he kept it locked in for so long. It would have really done damage. It was fucking. It, it, it was a really good move, to be fair. For Dolph Ziggler, who. I find very, very boring at the moment. His character is a rehashed character, and it's just meh. I really can't even grumble at the action in this match. We saw um, Kofi hitting the SOS and Dolph kicking up. We saw both men falling from the cage to the middle of the ring, and I the, there was these moments where both men were done, and it was like, oh, who's actually going to get it? But I. We all had we all had that in mind, like it's gotta be coffee, they're not gonna get it off. That is until the end of the match and the ending to this match was just fucking brilliant. I, I, I will say it now, it was brilliant just for the way that it caught me off guard. Uh, basically, uh, Dolph's trying to escape through the door of the cage and he gets caught, gets pulled back in by coffee. But then he like rakes Kofi's eyes and then pushes Kofi off him and starts scuttling back towards the door. He is almost out and it doesn't look like Kofi's getting up at all. At this moment I was shitting myself. I'm sitting there going, what the fuck? Dolph's actually going to win the WWE Championship. This cannot fucking happen. And then out of nowhere fucking Kofi just jumps up and jumps over Dolph to land both feet on the floor. It was a brilliant ending to a match that was pretty basic, to be fair. It, it, it was more like a how to have a cage match rather than an actual cage match. But I, the, end, the ending saved it for me. The ending was just fantastic. And the fact that they had the New Day come to, uh, you know, celebrate like, like they did with WrestleMania and that. I like that. It's not just a victory for Kofi, it's a victory for the whole team. It's brilliant. So then we move on to the final match of the night, and it was between Baron Corbin and Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship with a mystery uh, referee. Sorry. And ah, yeah, it turns out that the mystery referee, who was going to get twatted with the chair when they came down to the ring, was Lacey Evans. So it made it so that. You know, Seth couldn't actually twat the referee because this is WWE, this isn't the Indies. I mean, let's say it was Sammy Callahan in the ring and fucking Tessa Blanchard had ran down. She's getting twatted with that chair. That's just the way it goes. But aye, uh, in WWE, that's a new goo. So, I we basically had a ref that Seth couldn't touch, so we had to get underway with the match. Now, before she even had the bell rung, Baron Corbin twatted Seth Rollins with the chair. Now when the match actually got underway, we saw fast counts from Lacey Evans when Baron Corbin had the pin. We were seeing slow counts from Lacey Evans when uh, Seth Rollins had the pin. We saw a bend in the rules in more favour of Baron Corbin, which was obviously going to happen. We saw a spot where Seth Rollins put Baron Corbin through a table with a power bomb, and he told Lacey to start counting. Uh, Lacey started counting them out. She got to eight or nine. I think it was nine. She, was it eight or nine she got to? I think it was nine she got to before she shouted over the uh, uh, timekeeper and said, we are now making this match no count out. So Seth got Baron back in the ring. Obviously did a lot of stuff. And then Baron attacked Seth with a chair. And at this point, Lacey went over to the... Timekeeper again, sorry, and made this match not disqualification. So, 
we go we went on and on uh, a lot of it seemed like it was just boring action some of it was like good action but a lot of it was rinse and repeat raw action just we added ooh, look at what's happening eventually we actually saw Lacey Evans getting involved hitting uh, Seth Rollins with a low blow before Baron Corbin hit the end of days at this point Becky Lynch ran out and actually took out Lacey Evans which aye, it, it was it was a good moment but it should have happened sooner like this match dragged on for a lot longer than it should have done the storyline kind of made it a little bit more interesting but even with that it, it wasn't enough it, it really wasn't enough then after Lacey Evans is taken out John Cohn is called into the ring to be the ref John Cohn the referee from the last match who Baron Corbin blamed for him losing the match. Then Seth Rollins hits the curb stomp and gets the 1, 2, 3. And we see Seth celebrating alongside Becky. And there you go, there's everything that happened at Stomping Grounds. Uh, we didn't get the cash in from Brock Lesnar. We did not get to see Bray Wyatt. That was a big thing that I was hoping for. I was hoping that somewhere during the night Bray Wyatt was going to pop up. Because it looks like the whole uh, Firefly, Firefly Funhouse has came to an end. So we're actually going to get to see a, a him return to the ring. Uh, maybe it's going to be on the, the Mora's Raw. Who knows. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed Stomping Grounds. Even with a stupid like, kick ass and take names. I realised I was meant to do a fucking gimmick for it this video and I kind of forgot. Ah oh, well. Hey, right, I hope you've enjoyed the pay-per-view because... It did defeat my expectations. Uh, when it comes to the forfeit, Thomas was actually the one that lost, so he will be taking a lemon to the eye. Uh, we'll probably be putting that up on Wednesday. Don't hold me to that. We'll, we'll try our best to get it out on Wednesday. It will be this week at some point, though. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to buttfuck that like button. Peace.